Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We are working on Han Solo's Millennium Falcon. This is a classic model kit made by MPC, but it's being updated and improved to be released now in 2023. And in my last video, we assembled the ship. We lit it, put in fiber optics, put in LEDs. And today's video will be about painting the Millennium Falcon. So first step was to mask off a handful of parts. Now for all my LEDs that I want to protect, I used a little bit of heat shrink tubing and I didn't heat shrink it on. I put a little bit of Elmer's glue in one end of that heat shrink tubing. And then I just sat it on top of that LED. And it really makes a perfect little circle there protecting it across the back. For the blue engine, I used some yellow Tamiya tape. Now the fiber optic, we don't have to mask that off because we'll just trim it close to the body after we're done with everything. For the cockpit, um, I glued the cone on with Elmer's glue. So at the very end, I'll be able to pull that off and remove that yellow tape that I put around the inside. And along the same way, uh, the clear cockpit glass for the gunner's turret that's only being held in by Elmer's glue right now. After I'm done painting the base coat, we'll pop that off, clean it off, and put it back in. Now this video is going to be about how I paint the Millennium Falcon. This is not meant to be a definitive reference guide for the perfect way to paint the Millennium Falcon. There's already probably a hundred videos on YouTube about the perfect way to get to look exactly like the studio model. This video is going to document how I do it, which is going to be different than the way a lot of people do it, but hopefully we'll have a good result by the end. Now, the first place where I branch off from conventional wisdom on the Millennium Falcon is on my shade of paint. The Millennium Falcon studio model for A New Hope has a white that branches off slightly warm. It's called Reefer White, and it's white with a tiny bit of tan. Um, I take my base color to be a little bit colder. Um, I don't go tan. I go a little bit more gray. So my base coat is going to be white with gray rather than white with tan. And I do that because my favorite movies are The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, which have noticeably cooler color grading in the film. So I make my Millennium Falcon look a little bit grayer rather than white and a little bit cooler rather than warm. Okay, two other things I'm not going to be doing on this build is first, I'm not going to do pre-shading for the panel lines. Although if you want to see a really cool build that does do panel line pre-shading, you should check out a channel that's called Scale Model Medic. He did a series probably eight years ago um, where he took a Revel pre-painted Millennium Falcon and did an incredible paint job. Uh, I'll try and link it below, but otherwise it's by Scale Model Medic, and the series is called Budget Millennium Falcon. Uh, and it's a really cool video that goes step by step of how to paint the Millennium Falcon doing some pre-shading. The other thing I'm not going to be doing is on a lot of my builds, I'll actually start off with um, a silver base coat so that when I do chipping, I chip down to like a bare metal look. You can see that here on uh, the face of this ATST. Started off with silver, uh, did a little chipping to get back to the silver under the base coat. But I really find the Millennium Falcon is one of the few Star Wars ships that does not chip down to bare metal. I don't think I've ever seen bare metal on the Millennium Falcon. So I'm going to do an entire base coat. Then the different colors on top of it will chip those to get back to the base coat, but never to bare metal. All right, so here's my gray. This is a very, very light shade of gray, and I feel it's pretty neutral. Now, now when it comes to my shade of gray that I like for a lot of these sci-fi vehicles, I use white and I actually use chrome silver to turn it gray. I feel silver doesn't lean blue, doesn't lean tan. So when I mix this together, you get a very neutral gray. I usually go probably three parts white to one part silver uh, to get my gray color. So that is this right here. 
Now, because the silver has kind of little silver granules in it, this paint can end up a little bit gritty and flat. So it takes a little bit of practice to work with, but I think it gives a great result. I've taken that same mix and I added a little bit of deck tan, just really just a little bit on top of it to make a shade of gray that does lean tan. We're gonna use that for some of the access panels. All right, then I took that same gray mix I made up for the base coat and I added in sky gray and just start adding in drops of black uh, to make this little jar. This is gonna be my darker gray accents on the ship. Uh, then I took a red and darkened that one. I think I actually darkened it with smoke and a few drops of black. I made this up uh, probably a year and a half ago uh, to make a deep brick red uh, that I'll use on the red panels. And finally, I have my TIE Fighter Blue color that I've used on a lot of projects. And this is white, sky gray, and a few drops of just straight up blue uh, until I have a nice blue gray. We'll use this on the blue gray panels. So what I'm gonna do next is overall paint the entire ship in my light gray. Then we're gonna start masking off individual panels for those different colors of gray. And I'm going to be doing salt shipping on a lot of those panels to make it look aged and weathered. So let me get to it.
All right, so I'm about a day into painting all the panels across the Millennium Falcon. You can see I've been doing the chipping on most of them, and I think it looks pretty good. And honestly, I think if you're going to do the Millennium Falcon, painting the panels is probably the way to go. I think it's just kind of what this paint job deserves. But... MPC and Round 2 have also given us an alternative method to doing all these tiny little panels. They have a very extensive decal sheet, and you can see I'm, I'm getting ready to do some of the decals, because this is a model kit review and a model kit preview. So to actually review the kit, I really should use some of the decals they've provided. So we're going to put probably about half the panels that go on the bottom of the ship. We're gonna put them on using the supply decals to see what that's like. And yeah, let me get started putting on those decals. And what's really nice is they've given us this very large, you can see it's much bigger than the ship, this very large full color diagram to show us where all the decals on this ship go. And some great examples of what it should look like after it's fully weathered. All right, the ship looks so good like this, so nicely painted. Uh, it's a little too bad we can't leave her like this. We have to really dirty this ship up. And to do that, we're going to be putting a wash over the entire ship. Now back here, we're just gonna uh, use our little enamel stain to do these nice grills. Show off all the detail there. I think that'll look pretty nice. All right, now to really start the weathering process, we're gonna be using some enamel stain uh, to go over all the panel lines, to go all over the hoses, to pick out all the mechanical details. And we're gonna be using a combination of rust and black. So maybe a fourth to a third of the panel lines, I'm gonna deal with rust. Just putting a little drop uh, right at the intersections and panel lines, letting it kind of move throughout. In addition to the rust, we are going to be doing a lot of black. Now that the wash has had some time to set, we are removing it, uh, but I'm not removing it entirely. I'm letting my paper towel here get kind of dirty. So it leaves those classic Millennium Falcon streaks across the hull. So I'm just kind of pulling down in a straight line and hopefully leaving the panels nicely streaked, a little bit dirty, letting that kind of wash filter the paint to just change its tone just a little bit and leave the ship nicely streaked and dirty. One interesting fact about the Millennium Falcon is on the top, the streaks run from the inside out. When you do the bottom, you streak it the other way. The streaks on the bottom go from the outside in.
I keep working my wash into more of a filter. And of course, wash fits into the small recessed details. A filter goes over the entire paint to change its color or its tone. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the decals I've put on. Now, a lot of the decals look really nice. Uh, like this is a decal, this is a de decal, this is painted, of course, uh, this is a decal. Uh, this was a very cool decal that kind of wrapped around the corner. Um, I've got a decal up here, a couple decals back here. Uh, but what I'm running into with my wash, and my weathering is very wet right now, it's a very wet wash, is on some of the places where there's a, a little gap in the spacing of the decal, um, my wash has gotten underneath that decal and it's kind of hard to work out. Uh, so my normal kind of weathering technique is not working the best kind of with these decal panel lines. You can see there's just kind of a raised detail there that left just a little gap on in the decals. And you can see my wet weathering has kind of fit in there. It's causing a little bit of a problem. Here's another example back here. Once again, you see that raised square and it just means there was just a little bit of a gap between the decal and the plastic. The weathering kind of got in there. Now it's kind of stuck there. And I did seal it with clear coat. I did an acrylic clear over the entire model and especially over all the decals before I started weathering it. Uh, so if you do use those decals for the panel lines, do a much drier weathering, maybe just stick with chalk and pastels or do the panel lines before you put those decals on. I will say I really like some of the decals like this where some of the things they weren't able to do as engraved lines uh, around like the escape hatches. They did those with decal, so you still get that detail. And they did the same thing on the cockpit. So you can see where they weren't able to do etched lines or change the tooling to do etched lines. You can see they still give you a decal to provide that detail. And I'm gonna be just continuing to work this wash into a filter, uh, kind of picking and choosing where I want to be heavier or lighter. I'm gonna keep kind of working my streaks until I get to a point where I'm really happy with the weathering. The next step in weathering the ship is to put some larger streaks across the panels. Uh, the Millennium Falcon does have some real kind of distinct colorful streaks running from the tops of those panels. So I'm just going to be using my Tamiya Weathering Master Kit. And we're just gonna add a few streaks. And remember on the top of the ship, they come from the inside out and on the bottom you'll go from the outside in. So I might do a few more passes on those just to make them a little more distinct. Uh, but you can see that just adds some nice, more colorful streaks across the hull. All right, next we have all sorts of marking decals and there really isn't much guidance on where these will go. Uh, this one will obviously go on the cockpit and that's a pretty significant one. Uh, but lots of these little squares and rectangles, you know, your best thing is just start looking at some reference pictures of the Falcon and choose which ones you want to put on. So much of any Millennium Falcon project is just kind of doing things to taste. So you can see here it says additional fine decals are supplied to be placed throughout the model. I, I kind of like Star Wars ships because they don't use many decals. Uh, so I'm going to put a few on. I'm going to kind of see where they make sense to me. I'm going to try to follow a few reference pictures, uh, but I don't know how much I'll do. Thank you. 
So I believe my final step in weathering this model is going to be using these chalk pastels uh, to add a little bit of soot and dust around these mechanical bays, and then to create the classic streaking behind those engine grills. So this is it. This is my completed Millennium Falcon by MPC updated for 2023 and absolutely a blast of a kit to work on. Very, very fun and exciting to do all the painting and weathering for the Millennium Falcon. And if anything, the only thing I regret is not being able to spend more time on this kit. You know, I painted it in a about 36 hours start to finish. I weathered it probably only in three days and all that's just to kind of get the video done on time. Uh, I think this is a model kit that really deserves uh, to be worked on for a month, six weeks. It's a model to really live with. Uh, so many cool new additions and changes. And yeah, that's the back deck. I know a lot of us wish it had more detail like some of the other kits. But frankly, once you paint it and weather it, I don't think it looks bad. I think it's a good looking kit. Here you can see uh, some of the sidewall detail that's been new for this model kit. Yeah, there's the sidewall for the mandible. The sidewall going across the ship. You can see a much shorter profile course a much better looking dish on top of the ship yeah this, it's a fun experience to work on the millennium falcon and i'm not a millennium falcon guy it's not my favorite star wars ship um i much prefer the fighters the y-wing then the x-wing then the imperial shuttle uh but as far as a modeling subject not much beats the millennium falcon because you really do get to do everything on the millennium falcon Obviously, you get to light it, paint it, uh, take a look at how some of my chipping turned out on those panels. You get to do chipping, you get to mask areas off, uh, you get to do washes, filters, weathering, streaking. And yeah, you know, I'm sure some of you out there saying I overdid the weathering. Um, I don't know, maybe I would have toned it down or just used a different shade of wash if I had a little more time. Or maybe I'll give it another go since this is an actually affordable Millennium Falcon kit. Not too much trouble doing more than one. I did do more of the little decals than I thought I might. So you can see kind of the marking decals kind of across the ship. And I, I think that's a nice kind of final touch there. Uh, just adding some of those little decals across the ship in different places. But yeah, you know, I 
I like how it turned out. I like the streaking. I like the weathering. Uh, I like the model kit in general. Now, I have mine in landing mode, uh, but you can pull out the landing gear and you can close these panels up behind it. You have gun turrets that move on a couple different axes. Uh, you have a ramp that opens and closes. Uh, you have a battery compartment here, and I will probably modify mine in the future so that I don't have to run it off a wire. Once again, removable landing gear in the back. Our radar dish is movable. Here's the underside of the ship. I much prefer the weathering I was able to do on the top half of the ship. You know, there's nothing wrong with the detail on these little mechanical bays. I think those look pretty good. Um, I like all the hoses and pipes across the side of the ship. I did go back and on those decals where I had washed it one underneath, you know, they, they matched my paint color so well, I just airbrushed over them again. Yeah, the Millennium Falcon's a cool looking ship and a very fun modeling subject. But let's get the lights turned on for this ship. All right, let's get a look inside the cockpit. And yes, once again, the cockpit is one of those things that has not been updated. Uh, they do give you a very nice decal for the back of the cockpit wall. Uh, but yeah, I can see just very simple console and two chairs. Now, I haven't put these guys into the cockpit yet. Uh, the cockpit's not completely glued on, uh, mostly because I'm going to have another go at painting Han Solo. These figures are new for this kit. These are all new figures, and I'm very happy with Chewbacca. I think Chewbacca looks great. I'm probably going to leave him as is. And here's Han Solo. Um, he's not in there because I'm going to repaint him. Um, I'm not a figure painter, so I always do my best, uh, but I'm going to try and redo him. The mold is actually fantastic. Uh, you can see the molded hair there, the vest, the shirt, even the belt. Uh, the mold is great. It's just worthy of a better painter. So I'm going to repaint the figures. And once you put those figures in that cockpit and have that back wall detail, uh, it's going to look just fine. You can see my cockpit is lit, so you'll be able to see the figures. You'll be able to see that back wall decal. I've got those cool headlights uh, from those shots in Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back. And of course, I have those engines, so we can picture this coming up out of that docking ring in Mos Eisley with those bright engines, then take off and escape those uh, Imperial patrols or escaping the Death Star. Nice, bright, even glow. And you can see that clear blue part does have the detail of the grills. We have our nice red low clearance lights. Once again, our headlights and our ring of lights underneath the ship, the bigger floods. And then the ring of lights around the back. Of course, I showed you I did those with fiber optics. Here's a nice shot of that underside of the ship. Love those ring of lights around the bottom of the ship. Uh, I love this model. Once again, this is one you can really live with this model for quite a while. Really make a difference in bringing the ship to life. If you're looking for a fun modeling build, the Millennium Falcon absolutely fits that build. All right, let's bring in a little bit of a fleet. Like I said, I'm a Y-Wing kind of guy, and roughly these will be in the same scale. This one, anywhere from like 172nd to 176, depending on what measurements you use. Or if you use the old school measurements, somewhere around 150th, but I think these guys look pretty good. There's a Y-Wing, a couple Y-Wings with the Millennium Falcon. I don't know why right now I don't really have a 172nd X-Wing. I think this one is closer to 160th, but yeah, with kind of the fuzzy scaling and the Millennium Falcon, that's probably all right. I do have like three 172nd scale X-Wings I'm about to build up this summer. Here's a possibility for my shelf. I have my lone Y-Wing coming in. Then I have my advanced tie come in. And then of course, who takes out Darth Vader there? The Millennium Falcon. Yeah, imagine Darth Vader's surprise when he gets shot down by this big hunk of junk. Yeah, you know, I love Star Wars. I love the ships. Can't wait to set these up on a shelf. And of course, very much a modern ship. 
It kind of fits the same needs of the Millennium Falcon, a ship you can live on, travel on, conduct nefarious business. Um, kind of another old kind of beat up ship, kind of done in different style. Both of these should be in the same scale. The Razor Crest 172nd by round two, just this past year, and the Millennium Falcon. I think those guys look good. Both some kind of repurposed, nefarious, junky cargo ships. Very cool to see them on a shelf together. I really do understand the limitations of this model kit. Being an older mold, uh, a vintage kit, uh, the additions and changes they've made have absolutely made it much, much better. And no, it doesn't compete with a $400 kit, but this is a $70 model kit. And for $70, gain a model kit where you can play with the lighting, do whatever you want, and spend weeks doing a really cool, fun paint job. I think this kit is a no-brainer. This really does become a very serviceable and good-looking Millennium Falcon. Um, I'll put up a few pictures right now of kind of with the other competitors to this. Uh, the Ravel Snaptype Max kit, which is a little bit smaller. And you'll be able to see how much better this looks than that kit. Um, for kind of a budget Millennium Falcon, this is a good way to go. At the end of the day, I feel I've got a really cool display piece. I feel like I had a lot of fun in the week and a half to two weeks I had building it, painting it, and weathering it. Um, finishing up the build, I feel like I just had it over to do again. Uh, to keep playing with it, to keep playing with the panels and the weathering and the painting, because uh, this ship sh deserves to be such a process to really get looking right. Um, I can't say enough. I had a blast building it. I hope it shows you guys the good and the bad on this model kit. Uh, you can see things like the fantastic new sidewalls, the good dish, Yes, it still has the panel lines that are probably a little too thick. It does have very simplified detail on that back grill. Um, but overall, I think it's a good looking kit and I think it's a fun modeling experience. So thank you guys very much for watching the build. Thank you guys for watching the video. I really hope it helps you guys to understand what this model kit is about and helps you with your buying decisions and your modeling decisions. I appreciate it very much, you guys following the channel. And a big thank you, of course, to MPC and Round 2 for letting me work on this review kit for you guys. And thank you to MPC and Round 2 for all the model kits we have going on this summer. I'm going to finish up this video and immediately start working on the gigantic Studio Series TIE Fighter. It is over a foot tall. It's all new tooling. It is a massive model, and that's what I'm working on next. After that, we'll be working on the Kronos 1 Katinga variant. So lots of cool things coming up on the channel for the rest of the summer. And I'll see you guys later.